I have lived a full life. I have done everything I wanted to do. Those are the moving words of Cameroon's neat John Fru Indi in a recent television interview. Fru Indi died in the capital Yaoundé due to an undisclosed illness. Reports of his illness have swelled for months during which time he sought treatment at a Swiss hospital. Fru Indi was born in Bermuda in 1941. He spent part of his growing up years in Nigeria. His parents will later repatriate him to his birth country, where he begins life as a young businessman who later found the Social Democratic Front, the country's largest opposition party. Let's have a quick chat about this preeminent figure in Cameroonian politics. I'm joined now by Aga Inwi Fru, who is a public affairs analyst joining us from Cameroon. Asong Michael Kumba is a lawyer and member of the Rwanda Bar Association. He's joining us from Douala, Cameroon. Nijini Elvis Bane is a journalist and African affairs analyst. He's also joining us from the capital of Cameroon, Yaoundé. Uh, lady and gentlemen, you all come to the square. I, I want to start with Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I want to start with you, Elvis. How has Cameroon reacted to the death of this outstanding political figure? Well, madam, uh, generally speaking, I would want to say uh Frunzi's death uh came like uh, should i say a shock to a good number of cameroonians though somehow there have been some mixed feelings too within the cameroonian audience given that many know him and they remember him for his bravery and all what he did for this country as far as i'm a multi-partisan uh politics concerned in the, in, the, in the early 90s but many too are those who think that perhaps Towards his last uh, decade, uh, he did not quite um, stand for what he started with in the 90s. So that's why I said there has been some sort of mixed feelings. But I think that overall, uh, Cameroonians uh, are bereaved. Cameroonians are mourning because they have lost a great statesman. Absolutely. Um, Aga, what will Fru and D be remembered for? Yeah, thank you so much, Kimi. I think um, Frundi will be remembered, first of all, for his influence, you know, the remarkable influence that he had on the return to um, multipartism in Cameroon. Long before uh, multipartism uh, was a reality in Cameroon, Frundi was one of those who was very uh, uh, outspoken about the ills of the one-party system. And I think his loud and defiant, uh, the loud and defiant manner in which he spoke greatly influenced um, happenings at the time, you know, in 1990, before the regime decided or, or, or decreed that uh, multipartism could again um, uh, 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 be a reality in Cameroon. Fundi was one of those uh, that, uh, 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 you know, distinguish themselves in the fight for that to come uh, uh, to reality. And immediately um, that decree was passed, Frundi created the first opposition party in this country, which is the Social Democratic Front. But again, Frundi went on to challenge the country's uh, president, uh, uh, President Paul Bia, at the 1992 elections, which I'll tell you, Kemi, to date is the most remarkable elections to ever take place in this country. Over 30 that these elections had, and it is the only elections to date wherein someone came so close to President Paul Bia at the ballot box. Frundi went, went home with 36% of the vote uh, compared to 40% uh, for President Bia. And many observers, including himself, Frundi, believed that he won the elections. And another thing he should be remembered for is that um, in 1992, there were tension. There was a lot of tension. Many people believed that Frundi was the right fully elected leader, but he had been, uh, as you know, the, the results had been, had been uh, uh, um, somehow manipulated. And many people were ready to take up arms. Many people were ready to go to the streets and become violent. If Frundi had 
for once called for violence in 1992, Cameroon would not have enjoyed the peace it enjoyed for decades. So Fundi should be remembered for that person that advocated for peace and strongly contributed to the stability that Cameroon enjoyed for a long time. I'm going to stop here, uh, Kami, but I think there's just a lot that this great patriot can be remembered for. Indeed, and, and, and we'll have all, all of that conversation, particularly about his political uh, journey. But let me move on to uh, Michael now. Michael, what do you think, um, based on his political career, looking at how far he had come in the political dispensation of Cameroon, what does it say to you about what was his political ideologies, what informed his style of politics? Um, actually, um, Neil John Fundy was um, a remarkable icon in the political environment of Cameroon. Um, his policies were actually based on democracy. Um, the main slogan of his party, which was uh, the Social Democratic Front, was power to the people. We know that power can only belong to the people through democracy. And democracy itself is a human right which has been enshrined in the principle of the right to vote. So Bundy, in his way of carrying out politics, actually encouraged true democracy, as my former panelist earlier on said. Moreover, um, he had a political ideology in which disputes should not be resolved by conflict or by violence. And that's the reason why, even though through so many years it was being mentioned that he won the 1992 elections, nevertheless, he accepted defeat so that peace should reign. And finally, concerning his political ideologies, we could actually see his manner in advising the state in resolving the Anglophone crisis. It is worth mentioning that right up to today, Rundi is the main political icon in the Anglophone region. And there has been crisis which did not only start today, but since 2016. And Fundi has been for a dialogue. Fundi has kicked against violence, which has been perpetrated by both parties, whether it be it the state or be it the secessionists who are fighting for their rights, and the state are, and the state is actually putting forward its constitutional rights, which are automatically legal. But Fundi said, no, the way out to resolving the Anglophone crisis is not through violence, but through a peaceful negotiation. He has been putting a lot of pressure on that. He has been advocating for that. But unfortunately, he dies today without actually seeing through dialogue for the Anglophone crisis and peace within in those regions. So those were the main political ideologies of this icon, which we see today to be the father of democracy in Cameroon. Uh, Elvis, I want us to go back into uh, you know the very early years. You know he had moved uh, from Nigeria to Cameroon in 1961. Shortly after, well, not exactly shortly. In 1990, he decided that it was time for us to see another party and he established the um, Social Democratic Front. What I want to understand is, what was the political atmosphere at that time that you think may have informed his bravery to want to say that it's time we saw another party in our jurisdiction? Well, the first thing you have to understand is that um, uh, in any country where you have just one political system or regime or party, automatically it becomes some sort of um, a dictatorship. And I want to think that that was what reigned at that particular point in time. Because remember, the previous head of state, uh, late um, Amaru Ayujo, was, or oh, he had um, the CNU, you see, Mr. Biapo took over, and that was the lone political party in the country, meaning therefore that there was no room for anyone to challenge um, the regime in place through any form of an election. So I want to think that it must have been with respect to some uh, challenges, some, 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 some difficulties faced in the country, some lapses faced in the scene in the regime, that Fundi decided to come up with um, uh, the SDF and so fought very hard
for the regime in place to accept multi-partism in the 90s. And uh, like some co-panelists have already mentioned, uh, it, 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 it was a very serious battle, I mean, put it that way, because the regime not only did not want it, but many Cameroonians did not even see it a feasible something. So he stood his grounds, and of course, the regime had to give in to permit him to come up with um, uh, the Social Democratic Front, which became the first opposition party in Cameroon. So I want to think that which about the atmosphere at the time, it became a very tense one, because with the creation of the SDF, at least six persons lost their lives in uh, Bamenda, which was a stronghold of the SDF party. This is to tell you that, like, you see Cameroonians today celebrate Fundi. It is because he actually braved the odds to be able to challenge the regime in place, set forth the first opposition party, and which I can say has stood its grounds right up till he's passing away a few days back. Mm, I see. Ag, I want us to uh, talk about how difficult those periods were. That's pe the, the period of his uh, rebellion against the status quo. Um, what are some of the challenges that he uh, experienced as, as a political figure in, in Cameroon? Yeah, thank you so much, um, Kimi, for that question. Uh, thank you. Take us back, you know, down memory lane to 1992, wherein just after the elections, because of the, you know, the divergence of of, 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 of opinions, you know, between uh, Frundi and his followers and the regime in, in, in power at the time, Frundi was placed under house arrest for like uh, for about three months. A state of emergency was declared in Bamenda. Many more people died. Many of his uh, militants were arrested many of whom went on to die in prison, many of whom are, are still in prison till date, you know, and um, also Bamenda, which was like, uh, uh, which is still the stronghold of the Social Democratic Front, became uh, blackballed, you know, by the, 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 the regime in place, you know, Bamenda, everybody from Bamenda was viewed as, as, as an opposition, so there was some sort of stigma that stuck with uh, uh, Frundi's uh, uh, hometown. But also, after 1992, Frundi continued um, his political journey, he continued to advocate for change, it's true that he refused to stand for the 1997 elections, uh, I think, as a way to continue to express his uh, dissatisfaction with the way, um, uh, you know, the, the country's uh, democracy was being uh, uh, handled. But then he went on to animate his party. Fundi had one of the strongest followings when it came to rallies in Cameroon, so much so that um, he began experiencing crackdowns, you know, on his rallies, like refusal from the state for him to have authorization to have rallies, sometimes blockages for militants to attend rallies, arrests in and out, and so on. Lots of tension, but he kept on going. And Frundi went on to, to take part in three other presidential elections, notably 2004, 2020, uh, 2011, even though he never had the same euphoria, the same success that he had in 1992. Mm. He just never ever, uh, uh, you know, folded his arms. Indeed, while we are on the subject of the 1992 politics, we know that even after the Supreme Court had ruled that their hands were tied and give leg given legitimacy to the presidency of Paul, of Paul Beer, uh, we, we know that the Clintons mm -hmm. at the time who were in the White House in the U.S. Um, invited Fru and, and his uh, partner to a, a, you know, a, a presidential event there shortly after uh, that incident. Uh, Michael, tell us how significant that was into entrenching uh, Fru as an, as an important political figure for Cameroon. Well, um, as we all know, um, bilateral relations amongst um, all states of the UN is a fundamental principle which is always um, applied by many nations. And the United States is one of those countries that actually encourage such um, relations. Um, it is worth noting that the main goal of the United Nations is for peace and security to reign in the world. And um, certainly due to the fact that there was a lot of, ten there was a lot of tension um, in the 1992 elections, which my um, fellow panelists uh, had earlier on said, 
and that there was a yes, there were yeses that probably if Brunsby won these elections, automatically there were tensions. And um, these tensions could easily lead to a serious conflict in Cameroon. And we, it's worth well noting that Cameroon is in a very strategic position in Central Africa, meaning therefore that if there is any conflict whatsoever in Cameroon, then automatically it will affect all the other um, Central African states because Cameroon is a leading country politically, economically of the Central African region. So actually, um, for Bill Clinton to invite the two main actors of the political environment of Cameroon was a way to bring these two to understand themselves, to negotiate better so that peace can reign in Cameroon. And certainly, I would like to say that um, it's not Bill Clinton that actually encouraged such peace or negotiation, but Frundi himself, being a pacific person who has always stood for peaceful arrangements, actually did not encourage his militants to fight. Because had it been he did, then there would have automatically been conflict in Cameroon, and certainly that meeting um, which Bill Clinton called um, for President Bobia and Fundi to meet would have never, ever taken place. So, um, so, so actually, um, it was just a manner to publicly tell all Cameroonians that the two main actors have come to a compromise. But nevertheless, it was part of Fundi's quality and attribute to always be peaceful in his manner of resolving conflicts. Very well. I just, I so just that peace can reign in Cameroon. Indeed, I want to move on to Elvis now. And Elvis, I want us to talk about one of uh, you know the tactics that he employed in applying pressure to uh, the Paul Bia government, which has been termed as ghost town, uh, the ghost town strategy. Uh, talk to us about why, first of all, people listened to Fru to embark on the ghost town strategy, and and how influential was the strategy. Uh, if people listened to him when he came to the idea of the ghost towns and they followed him, it simply translates to the popularity that he had at the time. He tells you that uh, at the time he came up with the idea of multi-partisan uh, parties, uh, partisan in Cameroon, people were some sort of fed up with the system in place. People were hoping for something new, for a, for a change. And so when he came up, people saw and believed in him. They saw a, a, a someone who was going to perhaps permit them achieve their aspirations and desires, politically speaking, and even perhaps lead the, the country in some sort of socioeconomic um, uh, development. And now, also convinced that he had won an election that was manipulated and stolen from him, that was the more reason why people believed in him, and so he could come up with that motion of um, uh, ghost towns and people will be able to follow. So I think all in all, it was just to translate, or it translates to the fact that, like I earlier mentioned, Fundi was um, uh, a leader that was listened to and that people believed in and were convinced that through him something positive could happen for the country. Though I keep insisting that this was in the 90s because some decades later on, uh, like one co pines already mentioned, he no longer pulled the same um, uh, population like he used to do, the same uh, loss that he had uh, began yeah, to Yeah, and, 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 and I want you to explain that. I think that's what I can say with respect to. Indeed. Yes. Elvis, I want you to explain that when you say that in his later years, he seemed to have lost the luster that came with his very charismatic, um, you know, figure in, in his earlier years. Uh, what do you mean by that? What I simply mean here is that uh, I think somehow that charisma in him gradually began to die as the years passed by. And then worst of all, many people, some people got fed up because they were hoping and counting on him to go an extra mile and do whatever he could do to get back that victory he lost in, uh, that, that was stolen from him in 1992. But it's true, Frunzi was someone who preferred peace and who did not want to work on human blood to get to the presidency, so he did not think that violence was going to be a solution. And uh, as time went on, you know, the regime in Yaoundé, for those who don't know, is a very brutal one, and uh, when you rub shoulders with them, the chances for you to end up being, um, uh, should I say, uh, 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 broken 
are, are, are enormous. So with time, the regime found a way to infiltrate the police, the SDF, and then we saw some of the members who started dropping and some sort of infighting and all one of those are some of the things that caused him not to have that same following again, like he had in the 90s. Mm. Um, Aga, we know that uh, Fru had always been an advocate for a unified Cameroon, and you know the English-speaking side had considered him a traitor uh, because he fought against secessionism. In fact, they went as far as kidnapping him in 2019, attacking him, uh, burning part of his house. Um, speak to us about that period in his political life and why you, you felt that things went the way they, you know, they, they did. Yeah, thank you, Kemi. Yeah, I, I think Frundi found himself between the devil and the deep blue sea uh, because um, he has been vocal about, um, you know, the government's strategy being a wrong one. That's the military strategy that the government is using being a very bad one. And he has equally been vocal about um, the use of violence being inappropriate, you know, an inappropriate measure to, 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 to gain um, what the Anglophones so badly want. But also, Furundi out, ha, has been outspoken about his preference for a, for a, for a federal, you know, a federated Cameroon than, uh, and, uh, like, uh, let's say, the cessation. Yeah, Frundi never endorsed cessation. And that is something that um, the separatist or the cessation is found um, really disappointing because when the movement, when the secessionist movement started, uh, those who were at the helm, the activists, wanted to get as many big names as possible to join the struggle and to use their influence to be able to make pressure, not just on the regime, but also on the international community to uh, 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 sympathize with the Anglophone problem. But Frundi, who uh, at that time was one of the most prominent Anglophones and okay. has always remained the most prominent Anglophone politician. Everybody looked up to him and everybody expected that with the, the influence he had in the 90s, if he brought that to the table, then uh, the secessionists, uh, uh, the, the struggle for independence will have a greater weight. So everybody uh, uh, looked up to Frundi to do something, but Frundi, said no, uh, he stood his ground, he stood for what he believed in. He said, no, uh, secession is not, is, is not the ideal in this case. Let us go for federalism. And you know, those who were really at the extreme did not want to hear that. But also, um, when the armed struggle began, Frundi did not uh, for one minute support that. It's true that he tried in some of his outings to say he understands why the young people are taking arms, but he kept on saying that is not the solution. And again, that is something people did not want to hear. So it was, it was just very, very uh, easy for people to say, he has been corrupted by the regime in power. He has been corrupted by President Obia, whom at that time Frundi had met multiple times. It was very easy for people to say the Frundi that they knew in the 90s had been watered down, has, had been whitewashed to someone that they couldn't recognize. This, uh, Elvis, tell us, uh, you know, what you think uh, that says about the ideals and principles of uh, Frundi. Elvis, Elvis, can you hear us? Well, I think Elvis is not ready yet. Uh, Hello. Me, can you hear us, Elvis? If you can hear us, I was asking, um, you know, his position not to support secessionism of the English-speaking side of, of, of Cameroon, but rather to call for a unified Cameroon what does it say about his values, his ideals, his principles? Uh, because it, it is based on this that some people uh, from his, his bedside of Cameroon have said that he, he, he betrayed uh, that side of him. Well, I don't know if I got your question well, but if we are talking about his principles with respect to the Cameroon remaining a one and unified country, I think the, my previous, um, uh, the previous speaker just said uh, it all. Frunzi was someone who believed 
in a federal system of governance. He was someone who believed in a unified uh, country and did not really think that um, uh, separating uh, Cameroon was going to be an ideal solution to the crisis that now rocked the country. You know, the, the most difficult thing I would say fully face in this situation, just like any other um, uh, political leader in, the, in Cameroon today, is the fact that we are faced, with, we, 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 we find ourselves between two extreme uh, extremists, that is the regime in place on the one hand and uh, the separatists on the other hand. People who do not think actually that dialogue is actually the right course to follow. Many of them rather think that the only way they can let things work is for you to buy their own viewpoint or you simply are an enemy to them. Mm. So unfortunately for Neil John Fundy, he had his principles and I think he stood by them from day one till his last days on earth where he believed that we could settle the issue politically, we could settle it around the table as a people in dialogue and of course everybody finds his own share fair of, uh, let me say, the national team around the table mm. within the same house as um, citizens of the same country, but not necessarily having to go to partitioning the country. Very brave indeed, isn't it? Because he must have known the, the risks associated with, you know, uh, standing his ground. Um, Elvis, uh, Aga, and Michael, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, I want us to look at his political shortcomings. What's the political atmosphere will be without ruin D? how the SDF could move forward from this with uh, Joshua Ossie as the, uh, you know, the interim president and perhaps a little touch of his personal life. We'll be right back. Today on the program, we are discussing uh, the death of Cameroon's outstanding political figure, John Fruindi, who died uh, a few days ago of a protracted uh, illness. Yes, still undisclosed. Um, still with me are Aga, Elvis, and Michael. They are all joining us from Cameroon. Been sharing uh, fantastic insights on the subject matter. I come to you now, uh, Michael. Uh, at last check, we know that President Paul Dia uh, had n n not mentioned about you know the, the death of his arch rival as far as politics is concerned. Um, tell us if that has changed, and you know. If not, what does it say about the relationship between Bia and Furundi? I strongly believe that uh, the relationship between um, Bia, Bia and Furundi had um, probably, probably, probably grown through the years. And um, that's why um, so many Cameroonians had the impression that um, um, Furundi at one moment was actually an agent of the government, the authoritative government that was in place. Um, we realized that um, on several occasions, the president had to meet um, Nijon Fundi, and um, we even realized or even noticed that in some of these meetings, Nijon Fundi would come with some of his children or some of his relatives so that they could also um, meet the president. So um, all of these things started um, pushing Cameroonians to begin to question the type of relationship which the president had with uh, Lee John Fundy, considering um, the fact that um, even um, when he died, it was, it was actually made a big event and um, the president himself sent messages of condolence to his family. I see. So, um, I, 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 you, know, you know, I thought, I thought that President Paul Bia had not commented although his party uh, had commented on the matter. But I, I want to move, in, move on to uh, Elvis now. On the same question, has that changed now? And again, what, what, what does it say about the relationship between Bia and uh, Furundi? Well, I think Mr. Bia and Furundi already first, though being the key uh, opposition leader in the country for a very long time, they, first of all, they, they met for their very first time, I think that was in 2010, despite the fact that Fundi came to the land light in, 2000, uh, in the 90s. So it really tells you that between the two persons, somehow the relationship was not that quite cordial. But from 2010 to present date, I think there has been a certain degree of um, uh, togetherness 
between the two. And uh, of course, many Cameroonians, especially those who believe so much in the opposition, have not welcomed that relationship, that closeness between these two figures, because they, 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 they believe that it was as a result of this togetherness that um, uh, Nijon Frunzi got maybe compromised along the line because, like we say, I said from the onset, that there has been a mixed feeling as to his passing away, Indeed. where many people think that somewhere, somehow along the line, he betrayed the people. He did not still stand for the same values that he preached in, uh, in, in the early 90s. So I think that is what I can say with respect to the Indeed. rapprochement between the two of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, uh, Aga, tell us, what, what were politics in Cameroon B now without, you know, the likes of Furundi? Yeah, Kemi, I, I don't think there's going to be much difference um, from what it is, because in, in his last years, Furundi was no longer as active as he had been. You had other politicians like Maurice Campton who have, uh, you know, you know, uh, have become, um, more popular uh, and perhaps more appealing than Frundi was. So I don't think that uh, Frundi's um, demise uh, might particularly change anything in, in, in the way, in the status quo that we have uh, politically in, in, in Cameroon. But what I will say is that um, I believe that uh, with Frundi's death, uh, his political party, the, the, the party that he headed right up to his death, uh, the SDF, would have to work on itself a lot, would have mm. to do a lot of re-strategizing, because the SDF as well has lost its um, most of its, I would say, credibility, and especially in the Anglophone regions, which where it, 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 it you know, it, it was its stronghold, and today the SDF SDF is on its knees everywhere, and especially in the Anglophone regions. If you look at uh, senatorial seats, the SDF has just one parliamentary. Uh, in, in terms, in the parliament, the SDF is extremely low, uh, lowly represented right. in, at the level of the councils and in other uh, 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 places, you know, uh, where political parties are represented, the SDF is really, really um, on the decline. So I think it, it will be time for the uh, uh, Joshua OC to bring together the members, the militants of this party and put their heads together and re-strategize if the SDF can once again mm. have the appeal it once had in Cameroon. A big task, big task ahead for uh, Joshua uh, Ossie, isn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it brings me to you, Michael. I did say that we'll talk about what could have been his political shortcomings. Um, uh, Michael, what do you have in mind? What do you think were his political shortcomings in Cameroon? Michael, we cannot hear you. It would seem that you're muted. Yeah, thank you. Yes. So I think one of the political shortcomings he had as a political leader um, was the fact that he remained for long as the chairman of the SDF. You know, one of the main issues we are facing in our political environment in Cameroon, and not only in Cameroon, but in other African states, is that we have leaders who want to stay eternally in their leadership positions. And I think that's one of the reasons why, um, due to the fact that there was no alternance in leadership of the Social Democratic Fund, automatically they begin to, they, 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 the party begins to lose its credibility amongst the Cameroonians. So that's the first thing. Um, secondly, he was not able to build a very strong SDF leadership and community. For example, um, a few months ago, we had um, some SDF members, top rank SDF members that were being dismissed from the party. And that actually shows that he was not able to bring all these people together for the number of years which he, has, he had made as the leaders to be able to work together in one mindset, one vision, and one mission to be able to carry that party to the next level. So this, are, this has been the political shortcomings which Nijam Fundi has had, and it has actually led to um, the SDF losing its credibility amongst 
the um, Cameroon politics. It's worth noting that in the last elections of 2018, they only had about 5% of the votes. And they actually lost their position as the main opposition party mm. and handed it over to the MRC. I see. Uh, I, I want to come to you, Alvis, and feel free to also speak on what uh, foreign these political shortcomings uh, were. But I also want to ask you, what would be the single most important thing that you'd expect Joshua Osi, who's interim president now, or whoever becomes the uh, president of SDF going forward, should do to revive, revamp uh, the, you know, the Social Democratic Front Party? Okay, uh, before I get to that question that you said, let me just say one or two things with respect to the, the shortcomings. I think one of his shortcomings lies in the fact that at one point in time, he became a little too close to the regime in place. This is not to say that an opposition leader cannot work with, a, with the regime in place, but when you become too close with them, and like I earlier mentioned, for those who understand Cameroonian politics, it becomes far more dangerous for you. You know, there is an adage that says when you dance with the devil, the devil ends up changing you because you cannot change the devil. That is how the political arena is in this country. And so I think somehow he became too close with the regime in place, and that caused him to, lost, to, to lose credibility in the eyes of um, uh, many of those who were still expecting something from him. Mm -hmm. Like my co panelist said already, 33 years at the helm of um, uh, the SDF, I think he should have found time and know exactly at what time he had to leave the stage and let another person um, uh, take over. And uh, I think, too, as a failure, after 33 years and not being able to ascend to power, I want to think that the chairman should have been able to understand that there was a need for him to at least get or invite other opposition parties for some sort of a coalition. Because I want to think that um, uh, somehow the SDF has not been very, very open in that dimension too, when it comes to wanting to create um, a uh, form a coalition uh, in Cameroon. Now, talking as to what I think, um, uh, be it OC or any eventual president of the party may be able to do to revamp the party, I want to think they should simply first thing have to look back into the chairman's own life, like we are discussing his lapses here, find out where he went wrong and be able to correct the errors, just like what we have cited here already. I think the SDF, whosoever takes over from that, for the, the, the chairmanship of the party now, should also try to get closer or invite other opposition parties so that together they can sit and think and strategize because defeating Mr. Bia in this country and his regime as a single political party is very, very difficult and to an extent, permit me to say, almost impossible. But I want to think that if opposition parties can team up together and form a coalition, I think they can be able to do something. So I think whoever takes well. from the party will be able to look at things from that perspective. Secondly, there has been so much infighting within the SDF in the past years, and like someone just mentioned, with many key members even being dismissed. I want to also think that whoever becomes the next president of the party, he should try to invite back all these militants of the SDF so that they sit together as a family mm -hmm. and they really try to spot out their differences so as to continue with the same flames that they had in the 90s. And I will also want to suggest that whoever becomes the president of the party, it should not be a fabricator somebody because I think maybe you need to be compensated by virtue of the time you are put in the party, mm. but they should look for someone who has that charisma, that bravery, that courage, that Frunzi had in the 90s. I think by so doing, they will indeed. be able to bring back the, the limelight for it to take the position he had in, back in those years. Indeed, indeed, but Elvis, I did want to ask a question. Uh, you know, you talked about his long hold of, of, of power in the SDF. But on the other hand, we have Paul Bia, who's also held on to the Office of Governance for a very long time. So, you know, I'm thinking, what difference would that have made to the polity of Cameroon? Uh, Aga, would you want to take that for me? No, let me tell you something, madam. Right, you go see, ahead, Elvis. Aga, Aga, let's have Elvis respond to that quickly. Okay, okay. Elvis, go ahead. I'm listening to you. Okay, so I was saying that the fact that Mr. Bia has been there for over 43 years doesn't mean that we should go back. For example, if, you, if someone does something which is negative, which is wrong, we should not want to criticize him for such a thing and then practice the same vice too. Mr. Bia has been there for 43 years. We all know that he is not there out of merit. He's not there by merit. It is because he used all state institutions 
to his own advantage, uses the state military to impose himself there by intimate, uh, intim uh, uh, instilling fear in the mm. people. But right. I don't want to think that the chairman was obliged by anything to want to stay there for as long as he did. Indeed. Because like I say, at one point in time, we are talking about politics here. We are talking about charisma. And as gen years pass by, gener new generations pop up and the ideologies are different. I want to think that there was a time when he could leave the stage and get some new blood to come from there while he continues at the background to give counsel to that new person as to what he or she can do to continue to steer the party forward. Very well. I'll, I'll give you the last word on this one. Um, we've talked about, you know, his, his good, good side. We've talked about the political shortcomings. But I want to find out from you if there was one thing the politicians in uh, Cameroon could learn from Furundi, what would that thing be? What would that trait be? Thank you so much, uh, Kimi. Please permit me to just chime in for the, the, the last question. I would say that we shouldn't forget that in 2018, Furundi did allow Joshua O.C. to represent uh, the SDF uh, in the presidential elections. And that was historic because it's something that it's not very common to find in Cameroon. In Cameroon, what is common practice is exactly what President Paul Bia is doing, that I find my party, the founder, I stay there and I represent the party in everything, in every presidential elections. But Frundi did give the way for Joshua Osi, and that should be commended. Mm. And also the fact that he had already announced that he was planning to step down on such um, would have been uh, would have been witness if he, he didn't die. And I also rapidly want to differ from my co-panelists who think that Fundi became too close to the regime in power. I don't know how to describe uh, being too close, like because maybe they had a couple of uh, televised meetings. I don't think that is enough to say um, he became uh, too close. Right. The SDF refused to join uh, the, 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 the regime in Paris, refused to become part of the government. And that stayed, it stayed that way. And I think that should be commended because unlike other parties, which were popular in the 90s and which went ahead to join the government, Frundi did not do that. So I think that should be commended. Very now, well. coming back to your question, Kemi. Aga, if you could do it real quick for me, I'll be very happy. Okay, thank you, Kemi. Con oh, sorry, sorry, the lights just went off here, but I'll just continue saying that consistency. Stand for what you truly believe in and do not change, do not waver, no matter the pressure. Thank you. Thank you, Aga. Thank you, Elvis. And thank you, Michael, for your time and ins insight on the subject matter. I do appreciate uh, all that you have said here today. Thank you so much. Uh, Michael, Aga, and Elvis joined us from Cameroon. We discussed the death of John Fru in D. You know, all that we could learn from him and his political shortcomings. But it's a wrap this week on The Square. We return same time here on Monday on New Central TV. I am Kemeni Amana. Bye-bye.